Welcome back to Physics with Miyoshi. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about friction. Um, and regardless of what you know about friction, uh, we say it's a bad thing a lot of times. Uh, in your car, you want to reduce the friction so you can, um, in your engine so that you can have nice running parts. Um, but if we didn't have friction, we wouldn't be able to walk across the floor. I wouldn't be able to get from behind my camera to in front of the camera. Uh, there's all kinds of things that we need friction for. Matter of fact, your car wouldn't even be able to, to get any place if you didn't have friction. So, um, despite the ads to the contrary, a lot of times um, we do need friction of some sort. Uh, just not in the inside of our car engines. Uh, I left the part about normal force up here because uh, in general, um, the normal force has to do a lot to do with friction. Uh, we do have several types of friction first. Uh, we have static friction, we have kinetic friction, um, and we have a thing called rolling friction, which we'll talk about later. But the main two, static and kinetic friction, they have to do with static when you're stationary. Um, believe it or not, there's friction as long as, I, as long as I'm exerting a force on something, there's still frictional forces. And kinetic friction, um, which has to do with sliding or moving uh, and We'll talk about that in a moment. So, uh, how do we determine friction? Well, first of all, let's think about this. If you have a, a box or something on the floor or on a table and you pull on it, like I have my little free body diagram here, um, if I pull on this guy with some force, as long as it keeps from moving, then there, that means that there's got to be some force going the other way, right? From Newton's second law, we know that some of all the forces has to be equal to zero in order for it to stay uh, either at a constant velocity or at rest, which rest is a constant velocity of zero. So as long as I'm pulling on this guy um, with my force over here, then there's got to be an equal and opposite force back the other way. Well, and you know that uh, from experience, you know that if I, whether I push or pull, as long as it still doesn't move, I can still exert more or less force. Well, that's the static friction. Um, pushing back on you. And that static friction is caused by just the interaction between the two surfaces, the surface of the, uh, the body that we're trying to move and the surface that we're trying to move it across. Um, there are little points in there, you know, there's not necessarily very many points that touch, but because every surface, no matter how smooth it appears, it always is rough. And those little contact points are where it grabs or some things even call it a cold weld, books call it cold welds, but um, these little parts grab each other and they keep it from going moving. Well, the part about the force going as I pull or push or whatever I do to try to move it and the frictional force, they're going to stay equal even if I push a little bit or a lot of it. And so um, this thought, there's a thought that says that my well, it's not a thought, it's a real thing that the frictional force is always going to be a static friction, as long as it's not moving, is always going to be less than some maximum static friction force um, that could be applied. Now, that magic static maximum force is the force where this is going to take to get this guy moving. So, as soon as I hit that point of Fs max, then my object will start moving. Once it starts moving, then my kinetic friction starts taking play or uh, taking over, and now it uh, determines how um, how how much force I need to keep it moving. Um, and then you notice that once you get an object moving, once you get it sliding across the floor or across the table, you know it takes less force to keep it moving than it does to um, to get it started in the first place. And that's where we find out this this uh, uh, coefficient of friction, the static or the kinetic friction. Uh, coefficient is less than the uh, static one, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So let's find out what that little mu thing is right there. Um, if we look at this free body diagram here again, the force of my weight, or the weight, just the weight if you want to call it that, and the normal force, they must be equal as long as this guy is not moving up and down. So my force of weight is equal to my normal force, and if we looked at all the um, different types of surfaces and different types of conditions that cause static friction, we would find that there is some um, coefficient of static friction uh, 
that is only dependent or that's dependent on the surfaces and the materials and and all that kind of good stuff um, but the static friction max is always going to be equal to that coefficient of friction uh, multiplied by my normal force and the normal force for most cases is well for all cases it's the perpendicular force from the the surface um, but in the case of a flat horizontal surface it's going to just be equal to the weight now we'll get into cases where we change that angle and then the normal force is a little bit different it's not just the force of weight but we'll figure out how to uh, calculate that out later so again my static friction my maximum static friction is equal to my um, coefficient of static friction times my normal force or in this case my weight when it's a horizontal surface that's not accelerating up or down okay well let's kind of show that in mathematical terms uh, by finding out how much force does it really take to move an object uh, and in this case when we say move we really mean how, how much force it takes to get it to slide well if I look at Newton's second law the center of forces really is going to be zero uh, and like I, we, I showed you just a bit ago uh, as long as I still keep pulling on this guy until it starts moving then that frictional force, the static friction force is going to equal that force and really once I start to move it um, when I just start to move it to just start to get slide that's when this uh, force of uh, my pull is going to be equal to my uh, static friction max and the reason that is is because I have the sum of my forces it's equal to zero, one's going right in this case and one's going left in this case and I'll just add them together um, to get zero or if we rearrange this equation I can see that my force is equal to my static friction times my normal force which is just this guy I rearranged and substituted those guys in there uh, and then also that's going to be equal to my normal force is my mass times my gravity or my force of weight there um, we remember that that is just m times g and that would be then in the case of uh, my example here we have the static friction is 0.35 uh, there are no units to coefficient of friction because if we arrange this equation we can see that mu s is just my um, static friction max divided by my force normal normal force that's a force that's in newtons that's a force that's in newtons so the newtons uh, divide out and I'm left with a unitless coefficient um, anyway I multiply that guy by my 38 kilograms in this case and multiply that by the acceleration due to gravity and I get 130 newtons um, that's just the how, how much I need to uh, force I need to apply to a um, an object resting on a surface that has a uh, that between them has a static coefficient of friction of 0.35 and it's got a mass of 38 kilograms. So, there is some quantitative um, physics going on behind the qualitative idea that uh, it takes uh, some force to slide this object and it takes a little bit less force to keep that object moving, but right now we're just worried about how much it takes to get it started. Um, so, friction, it's not all bad. Uh, sometimes we do want to keep that object in place and that's when static friction uh, helps us um, and remember if you couldn't didn't have some friction you couldn't walk you couldn't drive your car you couldn't get any place and um, life would be a lot tougher without friction even though um, sometimes it's tough with too much friction so a um, little bit of friction we'll talk more about uh, more of Newton's laws and more about friction and more about lots of different kinds of things here in the future on um, physics with Miyoshi so thanks for tuning in we'll see you next time uh, for more physics with Miyoshi.